Hey guys, what's up? Russ Ryan 521. Here we make another Lego custom painted minifigure showcase for you. And today in this one we have my Lego The Walking Dead custom minifigures part three. Um, I've been working on these guys since about April, actually, yeah, because Negan was the very first one I worked on, and I literally made him only about a week after the the finale for season six aired. So I've had I've had most of these guys done for a little while. I just had to make some last minute touch ups uh, before I did this video. Um, we've got nine new figures for you here today, and um, this is, of course, in celebration of the Season 7 premiere tonight. Or I'm actually filming this on Friday night so I can get it uploaded and it can render and everything, and I can have it uploaded by Sunday. Um, but when I say tonight, just know that I mean, like, the night that I upload it, Sunday, October 23rd, 2016. Um, but yeah, like I said, i got nine new figures for you to show you, and um, yeah, I hope you like them. So here we go. Let's jump into it, starting with Negan. So first up, we got the man himself. Negan. Um, how could I start with anybody but Negan, you know, in a showcase like this right before season seven? But man, guys, ever since, like, n not even since Jeffrey Dean's Morgan's, you know, casting announcement, even before that, like, 2014 almost, when I first heard about the character of Negan, I was just so, like, oh, he sounds so cool. I was just so in, you know, just love with the with this character just this really cool really awesome you know leader and just he just sounded he was brutal but he's just such an awesome you know um deep character too and i'm really uh i really cannot wait to see more of him in season seven it should be great um but yeah i just i love the character of negan i wanted to do this figure justice so to start off um i actually basically i sculpted or i started doing this figure like a week after the season six finale aired that's how excited i was to make him um I did make some uh, new, you know, changes to him in recent, you know, in the last um, recent weeks, though, so to get him ready for the showcase. Um, so starting off with the sculpting, I sculpted off, or I, scu I sculpted off, um, I sculpted on his, um, uh, the collar of his jacket. Um, I sculpted on the scarf that you can kind of see it's wrapped around his neck there, as well as like the main zipper of his jacket, which is it's a very thin sculpt. It's hard to see, harder to see than the other two. Um, but yeah, and then I also did sculpt the muscles onto his arms to kind of show like, I suppose that's more of a comic book Negan trait, I probably don't need that for the TV series Negan figure, but I thought it might, I thought it looked kind of cool, I might take him off in, um, part four, because part four I'm planning on doing, a an open jacket, like white t-shirt underneath, um, Negan, I kind of plan to update him, um, so in part four maybe see that, or maybe you'll see that, um, but yeah, anyway, the sculpting on the arms actually, credit for that goes out to, uh, Jerd Figs. Or, um, did I say Jared Figs? Um, no, I meant to say, uh, The Last Prime. Yeah, yeah, he's the one that did it, not Jared Figs. Although Jared Figs does some great figures, too. Um, one of my other figures, um, I'll give a shout-out to him later on in the showcase, because one of my other figures was kind of inspired by him. Um, but basically, uh, yeah, on his torso, he just kind of has the, you know, the jacket and everything painted on. He's got a belt at the bottom of the jacket there. Um, the other zippers and the other little kind of, you know, pouches of his jacket. Painted on. He's got some little buttons on um, the collar of his jacket. Um, he's got the black glove, and then I kind of put uh, the white um, T-shirt underneath the sleeves right there that he's got on. Um, his legs have the belt. Whoops, keeps doing that for some reason. There we go. Um, but yeah, his legs. He's got um, black shoes painted on. He has the. Um, here, actually, it's not really. Let me kind of move it camera down just a little bit so you can see the shoes a little bit better but yeah so you see his black shoes and then um he's got a brown belt painted out with a with a silver buckle um, and then he's got part of his like t-shirt kind of hanging down i thought that looked kind of cool you know just more detail um and then of course oh his face i should probably say too his face i have the light gray uh beard kind of painted on with some white in there to kind of show like um you know you know, just white hair in his beard. I don't know. <laughs> There's no other way to explain that. He's got the uh, black mustache with a little um, patch of black underneath his uh, mouth, too. Um, I added some forehead wrinkles, some side wrinkles, you know, on the side of his face to kind of show aging. And then I repainted his eyebrows uh, um, black. And to think that what started off as an Indiana Jones face is kind of insane to me. <laughs> but yeah, so there's uh, I think his face turned out pretty cool. And then I kind of just shaved the widow's peak off of uh, this hair piece, too. So. And then the back of his torso, just some more creases in his jacket. So there's like shoulder, um, like shoulder lines or creases right there. Um, then the uh, back of his belt, both belts actually, the jacket belt and then the brown belt uh, below it. Um, and like I said, more creases and then the back of the red scarf. And then who, how can we forget talking about Lucille? Lucille, of course, is inspired by the, the moose figs. I think every Lucille that you'll probably see 
put uh, somebody do on their Lego Negan will probably be inspired by his. Um, basically, you know, it's just a twisty tie wire. You know, you, you can kind of like sink, you kind of like uh, peel the wire out of a twisty tie, and it works perfectly in terms of like the size for the barbed wire for a Lego bat. Um, yeah, I think I took like three different wires and just kind of wrapped them all around and try to make it look kind of disorganized and you know a little, little um, you know kind of not like in any certain rows, just kind of look like it's you know just kind of tie you know wrapped around it all over the place. And I just kind of dry brush some uh, red on there to you know resemble somebody's uh, <laughs> brain matter that's going to get smashed in the finale tonight. <laughs> kind of morbid, but whatever. Um, but yeah, so there is uh, Lucy. I think she looks awesome. She is awesome, as Negan would say. So there is Negan, one of the most anticipated characters of the season for sure. Can I wait to see more of him? You can breathe. You can blink. You can cry. Hell, you're all going to be doing that. So next up we got Dwight, and this is a figure that uh, definitely needed some updating after my uh, part 2 video. I mean, the Dwight that I had in that video from, um, you know, the end of season 5, and the kind of the clothes he was wearing in that, it just was not good, and then the scar I had on him was horrible, and I just, yeah, I had to redo this figure. So, um, this is basically, he's painted in the outfit that we see him in, like, the season 7 sneak peek, the one that we got, you know, with the Talking Dead special back in, like, August. Um, the one where he's kind of just pushing the, um, Daryl's, or no, it's not Daryl's bike, it's like a different motorcycle, but he's like pushing a motorcycle down the road, um, and it's also the one where, it's also kind of the outfit he's wearing in the trailer when he's aiming the gun at somebody and says, you know, everything's his or will be, you know, so, um, that's basically what this, uh, outfit is like depicting, it's kind of from that, um, batch of episodes whenever that scene comes up, um, probably the first few episodes of the season, um, so I might update his outfit if he doesn't wear that throughout the whole season, if it's just kind of like a an outfit he wears for like a couple episodes and then switches um maybe i'll update dwight in the future but for now um, i actually really like this of course he's wearing daryl's vest he has like a dark gray shirt underneath that and then at the very kind of like his uh, first layer or his bottom layer whatever you want to call it is um just like a tan button-up shirt with a few buttons undone as you can see right there um and he's got some of that tan shirt kind of showing through his sleeves um right there um, he's got a, a, a black shoes painted on. Sorry for that little stutter there. I don't know what that was. Um, on the back, like I said, it's Daryl's vest. So I just painted the. I kind of repainted the angel wings. I kind of just uh, did the best I could to replicate the ones on my uh, Daryl figure, and I think I did pretty well. Um, and then just like the little back collar of his shirt, um, little handgun right there, and then of course the scarring on his face. So for his face, actually, I should go over same face from last time. Um, I repainted the the um the beard and the stubble I actually repainted the stubble into like a beard this time and I kinda had it go like all along his face and everything and then I repainted his eyebrows I put that little patch of blood kinda dripping down his face just like the part in the trailer um and then for his uh hair I actually sanded it down and then kinda just repainted the sanded down areas um and then I actually yeah I think it looks really good with the scarring like from like that angle it looks really cool so I can't zoom in because it'll get really blurry, but I think uh, the camera's high def enough where you can see. Basically, I just kind of did uh, the same approach that LEGO Matic 9 did, where I took um, um, an X-Acto knife and then I just kind of made some uh, slits. I just kind of, you know, cut some lines down his face, painted that pink, and then put like a little um, purple circle around his eye to kind of show like the sunken in eyeball, kind of like um, the look he has on the show. And um, everybody's hating on Dwight right now, but I cannot wait for this character. For some reason, he just... I just love double crossing characters like that, you know, kind of like Merle. Um, he's kind of, you know, similar to that in terms of personality. I'll get his hair back, right? Um, you know, double crossing characters, characters, you know, with like cool, I just like a scar too. Um, and just everything about this character just seems interesting to me, and I can't wait to see if they go the comic book route and kind of make him like a like a frenemy to Rick, if you know what I mean. So um, I'm not sure what they're gonna do with him, but I cannot wait to see more of him in season seven and beyond. So yeah, there is Dwight. Next up, we have King Ezekiel, and once again, cannot wait for this character to appear in Season 7. Can't wait to see um, what we see of him in the kingdom, and Shiva, of course. Um, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, if you guys know, or I know you guys are probably saw something orange at the beginning of this video, towards the back. Just be patient, you'll see it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so for Ezekiel, man, I really like this guy. I think he turned out pretty cool, um, especially with the torso. I think the torso came out really clean on this one. 
So as you can see, he's got his, um, just like this blue button-up shirt. And on his shirt, he has, like, stars on it. Or at least in the real version, he has, like, little stars. But I'm, like, really bad at drawing stars. Like, even doing, like, the little, little scribble ones that you do, like, in elementary school. I could never do those. So I wasn't gonna try and paint a star, because I just knew I would ruin the torso. So I kind of went a different route and did, like, a polka dot design. You know, I thought that kind of would capture a similar look without me having to, you know, put a lot of effort into it. Um, so I apologize for that, but I think it's fine. And of course he got the buttons and everything, his skin showing through. Um, and then the jacket, you can see he's got some uh, black creases on it. That might be a little hard to see, but it does. Um, if I put my hand behind it, maybe you can see it better. Um, but yeah, he's got black gloves on. Um, you can kind of see the, the fur lining on his uh, jacket. On his face, it's like a face from an Indiana Jones set. It's like a tribal warrior guy. Um, I have a... Uh, the, of course, the black beard with a little um, gray stubble painted down at the bottom. Um, his uh, pants have the continuation of his shirt, as well as black shoes. Um, his staff has um, gold painted at the tip to kind of represent what it looks like in the promotional images and everything. And his hair is actually a Thorin hair from The Hobbit that I have dry brushed uh, gray to kind of represent the dreadlock uh, color, uh, like, look that he has. I could have just painted it fully gray, but I kind of like it with, um, the gray and black looks. I feel like that represents the kind of the dreadlock color better, you know what I mean? Because, like, dreadlocks look kind of like that in real life. They're usually, like, you know, they have, like, two different colors to them. It's kind of weird. Um, but if we just take that hair off, you can kind of just see the, the back. I just painted a few more black creases, just you know, they don't really stick out at all, they're kind of lame, but just whatever. <laughs> and then just the back of the fur lining. And then you see the back of the head from uh, what the head used to be. So, just put his hair back on. Uh, yeah, that's King Ezekiel. Once again, I've said this about all the characters so far, but can now wait to see what they do with, with this character in Season 7. Should be awesome. Next up, we got Glenn, who is only joined by Merle as being the two uh, figures that you've seen a new version of in all three Walking Dead custom minifigure showcases. Um, so like I said, this is my third version of uh, Glenn. Um, this one is his Season 6 look. Um, and before I start saying anything about this, I just want to give a quick shout-out to um, Flickr username BrickFigs1. Um, really, really good customs. Um, but basically, he did a... He did a Walking Dead, uh, Glenn, you know, TV series version of Glenn figure. I say that because he does, like, comic book series stuff, too. Um, but yeah, he did a TV series version of Glenn, and I actually, this one took a lot of inspiration from that. Um, I'll even, uh, you know, figure I'd give him a shout-out anyway, so. Um, but yeah, so that's based, so this is kind of based on, uh, his figure, but also based on promotional images that I was looking at, you know, p actual pictures of, um, Glenn. Um, but the main inspiration does come from, like, the torso, and then the, the especially the hair coming down. Um, but yeah, so on his head, of course, we'll just start with that. On his head, we've got, like, little strands of hair kind of coming down, kind of, uh, that would actually work on a Rick figure, too, because Rick kind of had that same look in the finale. Um, same, like, combed over hair that I've always given Glenn. Um, and then, of course, he's got, uh, his face is pretty similar to last time, except I painted, I tried to make it look more sad. I painted bags under the eyes, um, I kind of redid the, the mustache and then the little chin stubble, um, just kind of make it look better. Um, and then I think I actually retouched up the eyebrows, too, so, um, but yeah, I think uh, the head actually looks pretty good. I think it represents Glenn better than any, uh, head I've had on him in the past. Um, and then, of course, like I said, his torso, um, is, um, like his button-up, kind of like, a. I don't want to say like a sweater, but almost like a jacket or some sort of thing um, with the buttons on it right there. And then he's got a, um, a, a light gray t-shirt showing underneath with um, a little patch of skin right there. And then some more uh, creases. And then just brown shoes, you know, dark brown shoes. Some more creases on the back of his torso, as well as the, uh, the collar of his uh, shirt. And then a silver painted uh, handgun. And man, I really, really hope Glenn's not the one to get the bat in this next episode coming up. You know, um, that would be a really, really sad loss. But uh, all signs are pointing to Glenn, it looks like. So, you know, I guess we'll find out tonight. But yeah, there is, you know, if, if to actually if Glenn does get it, this might, actually might be my last time I update Glenn. So this may be my last uh, Glenn figure if he dies tonight, which may be unfortunate if he does. Um, but yeah, anyway, there is Glenn Ree. Awesome character. Next up is Merle, my third version of Merle, and I'm still not 100% satisfied with him. I have never known when I'm going to be able to perfect this character, <laughs> but um, basically the main updates on this are just mainly the spike. Um, just going over the other stuff first, same like a handgun and then arms as before. Whoa, 
come on, Merle, don't do that to me, brother. <laughs> and then he's got a black shoes painted on. Um, I retouched up the um, the white uh, shirt, like the white um, continuation of his shirt on his belt. Um, I feel like that uh, just to kind of make it look, uh, I don't know, I just thought it looked better like that. Um, with like one side kind of drooping down and the other side being like tucked into his belt. Um, and then I actually, actually uh, repainted, like I had um, white painted over the white of the torso last time, but it didn't look that good. Plus I kind of like the sweat stain look, so I decided to just kind of scrape that paint off. Because I think the white, the Legos white and um, the paint white, I think they both kind of blend together pretty well. And um, his torso, I, you know, is kind of the same as last time. It's like from Indiana Jones, just with skin painted onto it. And then his head is the same as before from Prince of Persia, just with... Uh, um, hair. I probably could have touched up the hair, but I guess I forgot. Same with the back. The back of the torso looks horrible, um, but I didn't really worry about the back of the torso. I don't even think the moose figs, you guys probably know who he is. I think I saw in one of his Flickr posts, he says he like rarely paints the back of his figures, because like, you know, nobody looks there anyway, so what does it matter? <laughs> so, um, yeah, so, I apologize for the back, it looks pretty bad. Um, but the main update really just comes from his spike hand. Um, I kind of, I kind of went, you know, a more complicated route with it this time. I cut the tip off of a leg, off of like a brick arm sword. Um, I kind of glued it to some uh, to this little ball thing that I sculpted, like this little cylinder that I sculpted to his arm. And then I painted the, it silver, and then painted the straps on. And um, I still don't think it's that great in length. It probably could be a little longer. And then he also doesn't have the arm strap painted on because he has one strap that goes up into his arm. But I painted that on, and it looked horrid. So it's a little inaccuracy with the figure, but. Um, it looks much better without it, believe me. So, um, yeah, there is Merle. Pretty simple, uh, figure, nothing much new about him, but, um, still like him. I still think he's pretty cool. Maybe I'll do a ver maybe I'll do a fourth version of him sometime in the future, I'm not sure. But for now, I'm pretty satisfied with him. So, there is Merle. Next up, we have the Governor. This is, uh, the Governor painted in his, uh, outfit from Too Far Gone, from, uh, you know, Season 4, Episode 8, Too Far Gone. Um, probably my second favorite episode of the whole show. I just love it. Can't get enough of that battle. Um, this is maybe one of the sloppier figures on this, or in this video, but it's also one of the, uh, most detailed, I would say, because there's so much, like, tiny little details I tried to pack into this guy that he kind of came out looking a little, you know, sloppy, not as finished, but I still, I still overall like him. So there's a lot to go over. So, starting with his pants, his pants, he basically just has, you know, some blue, or, blue, what am I saying? <laughs> he has some brown uh, shoes painted on, um, as well as the belt area, has like this, this little uh, belt with the belt buckle kind of off to the side, just like in the show, this little square belt buckle, with the continuation of his jacket, um, his leather jacket probably should have been gray, I didn't have that many gray torsos to spare though, so I just kind of went with black. And I think it actually works pretty fine. I don't really see much of a problem with it. Um, and then, of course, he has this uh, blue um, button-up shirt painted underneath, which you can kind of see in that in that liner. Right there's a little speck of something. I don't know what that is. You kind of see in between the like the divider line of his shirt. I'm not sure what that is. Um, but anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, so there's a blue shirt kind of painted underneath there um, with some creases and the buttons in it. Um, there's a patch of his skin. His face, I painted, I actually repainted his hair into like a darker brown, as well as the gray, um, you know, like aging lines, or gray aging lines, and the gray, um, you know, patches of his hair, whatever you want to call them, the sideburns. Um, and then he's got a facial, kind of like facial features painted on with like the little cheekbones, his eye patch, of course. And then the blood splatter from when he uh, was chopping. That was, I can't remember where he got the blood splatter from. It was either when he chopped Herschel's head off or it was when he shot Megan, you know, the little girl. You know, like when he uh, when the, uh, Lily gave him her body and he just shot her right in front of her. Um, it was either, it was one of those two things that he got the blood. No, it, was, it was either one of those two things that he got the blood scenes on his face from, but I can't remember. Um, but his leather jacket just kind of has some lines in it. You can see some lines that kind of connect with the lines on his arms. Um, and then the buttons on each side, kind of some, uh, the collar area at the top, and then, uh, two pockets, one on each side. He's got some, uh, collars, or some, uh, cuffs on his, uh, jacket, and then the back of his torso kind of just has, um, this was kind of like the little pattern he had on his leather jacket. You can see it kind of connects with the arms pretty well, too, so I like that. And then just some creases and whatnot, and then kind of a bottom layer of the jacket right there to kind of show that that's where the jacket ends. So, yeah. Oh, and then his uh, handgun is painted silver, too. Um, but, yeah, overall, uh, like I said, maybe one of my not-as-clean figures, maybe one of my more of my messy ones, but 
um, a lot of detail packed into, into him, and I really think this represents um, the governor pretty well, especially from uh, his appearance in Too Far Gone. So yeah, there's the governor. So next up we got Simon, and I kind of cheated with this figure a little bit. I know I've said in the past that I only, you know, make the main characters. Um, and I guess I'm not really cheating, but at the time I kind of was, because, you know, we didn't really... You know, I kind of just figured that Simon was just going to be a random savior that, you know, was going to die off at some point in the season. Um, and I just wanted to make a figure of him because he's played by Steven Ogg, who plays freaking Trevor in Grand Theft Auto V, one of my favorite games. I love it. Um, you know, so I just, I was just gonna make a fun figure of him just cause, you know, I like the actor and everything. But then it turns out, it looks, sounds like, based on that sneak peek we got a few weeks ago, it looks like he's gonna be, um, Negan's right-hand man. So, you know, maybe until he gets killed off, we probably, you know, he might not be, you know, as close to Dwight as he, as he was in the comics. You know, he might be, um, you know, uh, uh, Simon might take on that, uh, that kind of savior leader role, you know, kind of like second to Negan. Um, so yeah, like I said, when I painted this figure, I didn't ex no, I didn't like know he was gonna be like, you know, Negan's like right hand. Like I didn't know he was gonna be so prominent in the Saviors. I thought he was just some random guy. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy to see that he's gonna be um, have a big role this season. Um, so yeah, because I painted him like back in like July or August. So, um, but anyway, moving on to the figure, we've got um, he's got a, a green, like a lime green type of a colored pants, which is a weird color, but when I went back and looked at pictures, I swear to God, that's what he was wearing. Um, or at least based on the pictures I saw. So he has got these lime green pants painted on with some black shoes. Um, I did some heavy dry brushing on him, because I remember in this episode, the clothes he was wearing were filthy. Um, and he's got a black belt with a belt buckle painted on. I think the belt buckle actually turned out pretty cool on this guy, too. Just looks uh, kind of neat. Um, and then, of course, he's got the rolled-up sleeves on his arms with the skin showing through. Um, he's got a handgun. Um, his torso, he's got, like, you can see the, um... You can see he's got some pockets painted on, some creases in the shirt, a lot of heavy dry brushing. Um, then he's got the buttons of his shirt. And then his, uh, his uh, white t-shirt, his, like, dirty white t-shirt underneath. Collar of his shirt, and then the, um, the skin patch. His head is a Boba Fett head, which... Um, I have so little Boba Fett heads, you know, I probably only have three of them, you know, why would I waste one on this Walking Dead figure? Well, because it doesn't really bother me. I don't really think Boba Fett needs a head anyway. He shouldn't really, you know, he never takes off the mask anyway, so <laughs> what does it matter? I don't care if I'm using a Boba Fett head for this and I'm, you know, kind of ruining it by sculpting and painting on it. Um, I got no problem with it because I think it actually represents Steven Ogg really well. Um, so I sculpted hair onto it. I think the sculpted hair looks pretty good. I'll show you the back in a sec. I mean, he's got the mustache painted on, the big, like, uh, kind of like the big, uh, cheesy looking mustache. Um, and then the back of it, he's just got some creases and then just some more, uh, um, dry brushing and whatnot in the back of his shoes. And yeah, cannot wait to see this guy, uh, later on in the season. Did I mention that I'm a fan of Steven Ogg yet? Because I don't know if I have. <laughs> he's just so, he's so funny, and him as Trevor in GTA 5, oh, it just works perfectly, and he seems like such a cool guy in real life. Um, but yeah, I cannot wait to see more of him. I'm so glad that he got such an awesome role in The Walking Dead. He should be a truly, truly hateable villain, and that's what I love about him. So yeah, cannot wait to see more of him in Season 7. So next up, we got Dale. And this is a figure that, oh my god, my last figure of Dale, guys. If you saw Part 1, when I was first starting out as a Lego painter, it was like March last year. Uh, March 2015, yeah. And, oh my god, it was horrible. The paint that I used didn't... Like, the paint that I used for, like, the arms and for, like, the torso didn't match the, the tan of the arms. Like, it was, like, two completely different shades of tan. Um, and the detail on it just looked horrible. The face was bad. Just everything about that figure was just terrible. And, um, I really... I knew I had to update him. But for part two, when I was working on those figures, I was like, all right, well, I already have almost, like, 20-something figures for this part. I do not have time to tackle the mess that is my tail figure. So I figured I'd put him off till this part. He was the second one I think I worked on of these after Negan. Um, and I think he turned out pretty well. I think I did, um, a fair job, uh, representing Dale. Um, I think the face is a big improvement. His face is a Ben Kenobi face. Um, we'll take the hat off. I'm just kind of painted white. Oh, white. Wow, was up that voice crack. <laughs> and I think the patchiness, or kind of like the clumpiness of my white paint, actually works really well here. Because it kind of represents, like, a patchy beard, almost. I think it works uh, really cool. Um, and then, of course, the eyebrows are painted white, too. And I'll just put his, uh, his, uh cool little um, fishing hat back on there. Um, I also thought about sanding the hat down to kind of match, kind of like, you know, like right there to match the hat he had in the show. 
Um, but I was worried I might like sand down too far and create like a hole in the top of the head. So um, I may or may not do that in the future. And then of course he has brown shoes painted on. Whoops, that keeps happening for some reason. Um, I did a black I did a black background for my part two showcase, and then a few other showcases I've done a white background, like just the white paper for that I used to film. And both times the lighting has been really weird, so I'm just going back to the basics and just doing um you know gray base plates for my figure showcases from now on. Um, but yeah, back on topic, he has his uh his um tan like um like vest or not vest like a some sort of like you know jacket kind of um, put over him with the coll you can see the collars on that um dry brushing didn't turn out super well on him but i think it looks pretty good it looks kind of uh you know it doesn't look like it's, it doesn't really look natural it looks like you know we got like brown splattered all over him <laughs> um and he's got some buttons on his jacket he has a uh, he has a uh, white um like a white tank top underneath with uh, i kind of like the sweat line right there i think it looks funny um, then I gave him like this hunting rifle and I just painted par uh, parts of it black, which I think looks pretty cool. He has, it's kind of hard to see, but you guys remember his quote from season one about um, why he wears the watch um, in the episode Vatos, I think it was. So I just kind of painted some uh, silver on there to represent his watch, rather than getting an actual like you know watch piece that I think one of those uh, Lego weapon companies uh, make. I probably could have just ordered one of those, but um, painting it on is fine too. Looks pretty good. Um, the back of his torso, just the collar of his shirt, and then more dry brushing, and that's pretty much it. Um, you're probably thinking, oh, well, Ryan, that's the end of the showcase. You said eight, you said nine figures, but I've only seen eight so far. Where's the ninth one? Well, I will show you. And of course, finally, we have Shiva. This is a figure I have been, it's been long in the making. I was just waiting, waiting until we saw Shiva in that trailer so I could make a figure of her before the season air or before like the season started so I could put her in this part in part three. Um but yeah, man, I just I think this one turned out really cool. So starting over this one was a lot of work. I think this took me five hours total to do. I was I was, you know, kind of anticipating doing this one and I was curious how long it was gonna take me, so I like timed myself with this one and it was roughly five to six hours it took. So what I did is I took the body of a warg. I took like a white warg. So unfortunately, I have no more white warg in my uh, Middle Earth, so I only have two wargs now. You know, that kind of sucks, but whatever. <laughs> but, yeah, so I took a white warg. I sanded down the face, like, a lot. I sanded down, like, the jaw and everything um, of both parts, of both, like, the jaw piece and kind of the snout part. Um, and then that same night, I, like, painted it all, um, all uh, orange. Um, and then what I did is I added about all the black stripes, and that took a little bit of time to do. Some of them don't look very clean, but, you know, it's kind of, they're supposed to look random anyway, you know, it's just kind of random stripes. Um, so, you know, I wasn't really, you know, too concerned. Um, like, or, um, yeah, sorry, AMC hadn't really released any pictures of, um, Shiva, other than that quick shot of her in the trailer. Um, so I didn't really have much to go on for the body, so I just used a, I just used a standard, um, like, you know, stock photo of a tiger and thankfully when um amc the other day released an official picture of ezekiel and shiva where you can see like her full body thankfully the um the stripes and everything matched up pretty well so i kind of looked out there and then of course you can see i've got like the claws kind of to see what i have claws painted onto her uh, feet right there um, i'm pretty i'm pretty sure she was a she that's why i'm gonna i'm gonna keep saying she because i'm pretty sure it is or she is um, but yeah, as you can see, I added stripes on the tail as well. Here's kind of a look at the other side. Um, yeah, there's a little patch right there where I got some black, and uh, I had to clean that up a little bit so that doesn't look very, uh, very good. But yeah, so like I said, some of the striping doesn't look great. I did my best though. But I mean, man, I just think doing for as for a Lego tiger, I think this one works out really cool. And then the face, whoops. Here, yeah, maybe I'll keep my hand back here for a sec. Yeah, the face I think looks really good. I kind of the stripes on the head don't look perfect, but I think they they do. I think they do it justice. I think they look pretty good. Um, and after I sculpted or after I asked, um, after I sanded down the nose and everything, what I did was I actually sculpted on um, the nose. I sculpted on this little part right here over the mouth, just to kind of because there was like a gap there, so I just had to sculpt something on. Then I sculpted on the mane, which the mane is probably the one part of this thing that I would say does not look very good. It looks very you know not it doesn't flow naturally with the figure at all um but in a, in any case um, i just kind of painted that white i painted the snout pink with a little you know black on right there kind of painted this part of this patch down here white which the white doesn't really blend in with the lego white but it works fine i guess 
Um, I didn't paint anything inside the mouth, you know. It works with inside the ears, painting those black, but the mouth, I thought I might screw it up by painting the inside of the mouth black. It might look kind of weird, so I just left the mouth plain for now, or, you know, unpainted. The eyes were kind of tough to do. I just kind of painted some yellow, and then just kind of some black slits in there for the pupils, but I think they kind of capture, like, that, uh, the cat eyes pretty well. I think they look pretty good. Um, of course, you know, underneath the mane, everything is all white. Um, you know, the white only goes, like, like to right here. It doesn't go underneath the tiger. Um, and the, even the black stripes painted on the top of the head right here. And the orange even goes down here. And then, uh, um, yeah. You just kind of see, you just kind of take it all in. And then the only thing I really did to, um, to, uh, you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Differentiate, that's what I'm looking for. The only thing I really did to differentiate uh, this tiger from, like, or to differentiate Shiva from any other, you know, regular tigers, I just added blood stains on the mouth. Ugh, dang it, she keeps going out of focus. Yeah, I added blood stains on the mouth, so as you can see, just right here, just kind of added some, uh, you know, some blood dripping down on the teeth, and, uh, kind of just dripping down her jaw, so I think that looks really cool. Um, yeah, let me know what you guys think of Shiva. This one, like I said, it took me like five hours. I did the sculpting, the sanding, and all the painting, and then kind of painted the whole thing orange. I did all that in one night. The next night, I did all the black stripes, you know, and um, and added some more, you know, other touches to the face. And then the last night, I think I only worked, you know, the first two nights, I just spent like two hours on it, and then the last night, it only took like an hour to just like finish up the features on the face. So, like I said, like five hours total. Um, but yeah, I really like this one. Let me know what you guys think. I've only other seen I've only seen one other person do a Shiva, and that's a uh, Jared Figs on Flickr, um, and his is based off the comics. So um, I like to think I'm probably one of the first people to do a TV series Shiva. So anyway, let me know what you guys think, and uh, yeah, let's wrap this video up. So there you have it, guys. There are my Lego The Walking Dead custom painted minifigures part three. Hope you like them. Uh, let me know down in the comments which one's your favorite. Um, if I had to pick a favorite, um, oh man, I really like Negan, um, I think Negan might be my best, um, although Shiva, of course, Shiva being, you know, a different figure for me, um, I am actually really, uh, proud of that one too, um, Ezekiel and Glenn, they're both pretty good, you know, um, Dwight, um, the governor took a lot of time to do, so I like them kind of all for their own unique ways, if you know what I mean, um, but yeah, I cannot wait for the premiere tonight, guys, it should be insane, season 7 should be great. Um, man, I know some tears are going to be shed tonight, um, depending on who the death is, maybe even by me, so, um, yeah, let me know what you guys think of them down in the comments, let me know your favorite, um, tell me what you're, in, what you're expecting for the premiere tonight, if you've ever, if you've already seen the premiere, um, after, before you watch this, um, then let me know what you thought of it down in the comments, and, um, yeah, until next time, thanks for watching, guys, stay tuned for, for, uh, part four, um, part four I hope to maybe get out around the... Maybe season seven finale, um, but yeah. Um, in terms of figures, I'm thinking maybe I'll just update some older characters. You know, maybe I'll uh, if there's any new characters in season seven that I haven't made already in this part, then maybe I'll do some more for that part. Um, I'm actually thinking about making a Terra because it looks like um, she might be more prominent in season seven than she has in past seasons. Um, so maybe I'll make a Terra. Maybe I'll make a Heath, um, Aaron, Rosita. Um, uh, Enid, that was the other one I was thinking of. Um, so any of those guys, maybe I'll make for part uh, four. I'll consider it. I'll see uh, what the season has in store for us um, when I determine what characters I want to make. And uh, leave a request down in the comments, too. Uh, maybe I'll even make one of the ones you ask for. So anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Comment, subscribe, and I will see you later. Thanks for watching.